everyone. Welcome back to the Team Empire podcast. You're, um, you're with your host, Shannon. I've got a cool episode for you guys today. I've got a previous guest back on. But first, our sponsors, Infinite Aesthetics. Don't forget to use the code Empire if you are shopping with them to support the pod. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube as well. It always helps a lot and like the videos if you're watching them on YouTube. Um, my guest today has been on before. He hasn't been on since, uh, I think it's August 2023. So last year before the season even erupted. So we're going to talk about a bit about that. But we've got a fun segment for you guys today. We're going to talk about more about it in a second. But everyone, we've got Jordan Earl back on the pod. How are you, Jordan? I'm good. Thanks for having me back. It's good to be back. No worries. It's been good. so good to just like follow you through like the off season and stuff. And we're just talking about it. Everyone like quietens down a little bit over the off season, just like knuckles into what they're doing or whatever. And then it pops back up when the season starts. But it's just been really good to follow you and just see you again and have a chat. But what have you been up to? Can you just tell us what you got? What you've been up to since the season ended, maybe? Because that's when everyone sort of goes quiet. I've had I've had a lot on. Um, nothing to do with bodybuilding. Just a lot of a lot of stuff going on. Um, nothing overly worth talking about, to be honest. Um, just just more of the same, really. In terms of work, yeah, more of the same. Trying to, you know, lots of new new people joining, and lots of the same people just trying to improve from last year or improve from whenever they last competed, and getting people set up properly for for the, for the preps that are have already started or are about to start. Um, just yeah, more of the same stuff. More of the same. We love it. Here for it. And this is kind of how it is, isn't it? It's just like, if you can't rinse and repeat, <laughs> you won't be in it for the long haul. Exactly. Um, exactly. Speaking of, though, our IFBB season is about to kind of kick off. Like, we're all the everyone, some of the people are under like 20 weeks out, 15 weeks out, depends who's competing when. But, you know, I've got to ask you, how are your athletes looking and stuff? How's the team looking? Um, and do you feel like it's going to be another good season? What do you What do you think around that sort of? Yeah, yeah. got a solid team. Um you know, as always, like you compete, like the, you know, the shows were last year and some people handle that period in the off season really well. Others don't, others kind of flourish um, when, when prep starts, which isn't really a good thing. You kind of want to be on top of your game all the time, but um, I'm finding the longer I work with certain people, the better they're getting at that. Um, so yeah, it's, um, we should, I'm very confident we'll see big improvements across the board. Um and yeah, it's, um, everything's kind of on track with, you know, the majority of people. And if it's not, um, you know, they're getting there. So it's going to be a good year. It's going to be a very exciting year, um, not just with my clients, but I think the standard across the Federation is, in this country anyway, is, is getting better every single year. Um, it's not always reflected show to show, but I think if you just look at the majority of athletes each year, it is getting better. So I don't expect that to change this year. Um, which I hope it doesn't. And yeah, it's going to be good for New Zealand bodybuilding. Yeah, I'm stoked. I can't wait. So you'll have like some of your athletes from last year will be back, hey, but then some of them won't be. They'll be taking a year off. Is it a bit of that this year? Yeah, yeah. Mo most of my clients that competed last year will be on stage again. Some of them are taking the year off. For either they want to improve or they have other things on and, you know, prep isn't a wise choice, especially when it's someone's hobby and they've got some really you know, serious opportunities on the, on the forefront. Um, but majority of them will be on stage. Um but yeah, I'd say 90% of them, plus new ones, obviously. Oh, I love that. Everyone get your tickets this year. It's going to be worth a watch, I reckon. Um, and just before we move into our new segment and stuff like that, we're going to talk about, I need to talk about your YouTube because I love your YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like there might be a bit of a gap between videos sometimes, but fuck, I love it when it comes up. I'm like stoked. <laughs> so you just did a video and I'm just going to pump up your YouTube so everyone can go fucking give you a subscribe Thank as well. You. Um, yeah, you did this the flaming onion challenge, and any from <laughs> Auckland will know this challenge. But if you're not from Auckland, you might not know or whatever. But it's a cool challenge. Just tell us about the challenge and how it went for you, because you guys, you and your mate went in. Tell us about how it all went. So, so we've been planning to do these since like end of last year. Uh, we just haven't never got around to it, and we had quite a few booked in with places, but things came up, and he couldn't do it, or I couldn't do it, and we wanted to try it for ages. It's just one of those things. We, I, I like watching. Um, competitive eaters on youtube i find it hilarious and so does he so we kind of always wanted to try it just to see what it feels like um and then flaming onion i had actually talked to them a few months ago about maybe doing something um and then they posted their challenge and i said yeah we're in like we'll see you on the weekend so we went in we went in <laughs> and it was not it wasn't as fun as i thought it would be Ugh. it was hard <laughs> yeah it was really difficult it was very uncomfortable but you know it was a bit of fun and um everyone seemed to love the video which i thought they would yeah. um, i always did plan on filming it um i wasn't sure i was a bit like uh is this something i should film and i said you know what people are going to enjoy it so fuck it yeah and it shows it, the so, outside yeah. it shows you yeah, just yeah, a bit of, bit of fun bit yeah. of fun 
<laughs> um it looked hard though like like you got put to work this is the first time i've seen you struggle like <laughs> ever yeah <laughs> it was like, like uh, it was i've never felt like that in front of food before it was hard like you get to the point where i i don't know how they do it like the, the people i watch on you they just do it so easily um and i don't know how there's a girl in new zealand who's a competitive eater she did the challenge and her name her name's nella she's a machine she did it in 21 minutes and it's just like she's tiny she'd be like she's a tiny 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 person and we're like i'm sitting over this food like can't even look at it um i didn't quite finish spoiler alert but i nearly did he did he finished he did. yeah i don't know how yeah. uh, he was going so serious <laughs> yeah, he was in another world. <laughs> I, got an, I just couldn't think as serious as he did. No, it was fucking brilliant. You guys have got to go watch it. If you haven't yet, go check it out. Like some of those food challenges ones, like some people are a bit cringe when they do it, your ones crack up. So go give him a follow. It's in the description below the link. So go check it out, guys. Um, the last time we chatted, obviously, like I said, was August last year. So it was just before the end of the season and before the season got good and deep and everyone jumped on the stage. Just so I've got to ask you, what do you think about our new pros? How do you think Nationals went? Do you think it was a pretty good end of the season? What do you reckon? Um, new the new pros, yeah, I think um, like always, some of them were clear winners. Some of them was you know you could you could argue they maybe someone might have a different opinion, but it was nothing was wrong with the calls. Um, I think I think um everyone was good for for New Zealand level, but obviously to take that and I don't say this dis disrespectfully, but to take that next step and to go not just compete on a pro stage, but to actually compete mm -hmm. and be competitive. Um, everyone's going to have work through obviously but they all know that um and you know i follow a few of them and they've they're on an upward trajectory they were on an up, up, upward trajectory already and it's continued so no doubt they'll they'll continue to do that but i mean that's that's probably always the case from you know going from amateur competitions to pro competitions yeah. and when you go over and you see these people in the flesh you know that do pro shows across all the classes you, you do see like oh yeah it's a big it's a big it can be a big jump um mm -hmm. depending on the stage you stand on but um, yeah, I think they all, you know, they all seem, you know, I think three of them, sorry, two of them, no, three of them, I think, have already announced they're doing a pro show this year. So they're getting straight in there, which is really cool to see. Um, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. And they're only going to improve from that. So it's cool to see um, pros, you know, get their pro card and be proactive straight away and jump straight into shows. Um, it's not always the it's not always the best thing to do. Obviously, some people need time. Some people aren't there yet. They need they they they're realistic with their physiques and they know they need time. But it is cool to see it, and it's cool to see just across the board. Lots of pros competed last year. Lots of pros already committed this year, um, which we haven't seen in New Zealand for a long time, unless there's been shows here. But these people are actually going on a plane, going to America, going to wherever Hawaii, uh, China, wherever, and and, and competing. Um, and it's really cool to see. Yeah, nationals was. It was just what what I think everyone expected it to be. It's nationals, right? So you're going to have your stand up competitors. You're going to have, you know, people who it's their first. Time. Like there's going to be a range of levels. Um, and I think the, you know, I think the people who majority anyway who did really well, you know, they all brought it. They all polished, conditioned. Um, yeah, and um, kind of just what you expect. So yeah, it was good. And I think um, most majority of the classes were a step up from the year before, um, and. Let's, let's just hope that continues as I said at the start yeah I'm sure it will hopefully it will um, and like you said there's, you touched on there that a lot of pros are going overseas this year and I'm so excited for that as you would know as well a lot of them are jumping out there but I think it's our first wellness to um, the pro stage as far as I know do you know any yes, other it is. it is the first one right yeah, yeah. it's going to be so she's exciting gonna do, she's going to do really well she's uh, she's she's on a different level yeah to to everyone else i'm just gonna say that it's not i'm not a, i don't even i've never spoken to the girl but she's on her own <laughs> level so it's gonna be really cool to see it's really cool to see i think she's gonna do i think she'll do really well and um it'll be cool to see like how she does in terms of like how she places um you know because obviously like like we said the level of the level with like especially the grocery store is huge so mm -hmm. it's it's not an easy show but it'll be cool to see how she does kind of mm -hmm. set it'll kind of set a benchmark yeah definitely yeah She's got such great shape and everything as well. And by the way, we're talking about Jasmine. So if you're not following her journey, go and follow her um, from DGL, DJL Pro, uh, Pro Coach Old Coaching, I think it is, on Instagram. So go check them out because that'll be really worth the, worth the visit. And we've got Kate in like five weeks getting on the stage. So there's lots of stuff going on. Lots of people. Kate's five weeks out. But like, Kate's five weeks out. She's oh, competing in May. Out, that came out fast. I know. She's got five shows. There's another one who's going to do, there's another one who's going to do exceptionally well. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, she already has, but I think um, 
It's only she's she. I think she'll be the Olympia this year. Yeah, I agree. I'm so I'm fucking I'm about to fly over there. Like <laughs> that's so pumped, man. Um, oh, I'm actually just putting if you have, if you're listening to this now, I've put a post up on our Instagram for the Timmy Pie podcast of Kate's shows. So if you want to go and see what shows she's doing, you can check it out on our Instagram. And they've also usually got live streams, but you have to pay per view usually. So it's worth it for our girl Kate though. Um, all right, let's get into our little segment, and then we're gonna talk more about you and like what you're up to after that. Okay, so. Cool. Our money new segment's called Truth or Trash. There's enough fucking shit out there. And I know that you know that as a coach, it's like sometimes your clients come to come to you with the most out of this world shit. I saw this on TikTok or what the, you know, and it's just like there's enough crap. So I thought I'd hit you with some of them and they're not going to be like a little soft on the surface. This is more like bodybuilding or like, you know, going to the hard stuff so we can actually find out the shit. So I'm going to ask Jordan. I figured who better than, <laughs> than Jordan for this one. <laughs> and I'm sure we're going to find out exactly if it's truth or trash. So let's get started, hey? Let's start with the first one. Do it. All right. Can body fat, can it turn into muscle? And then vice versa, can it turn into fat? Is can it you know how that myth is around there? Is that possible? No, fat is fat and muscle is muscle. So <laughs> you'll see sometimes people will like say I just to give you an example, someone uh, someone might be 120 kg quite fat. And then they might lose some body fat and they might still weigh hundred kilo and they look different and, and so they might say, oh, I've turned my fat into muscle. No, you've just lost body fat and you've gained muscle. So it's yeah. not you cannot yeah, we always used to think that when we were like 12, 13, 14, but it's not true. It's not true. People still think that too. And I think it's just kind of like still in the system here somewhere. So no, yeah, one yeah. is one and one is the other. Jordan said it. It's not possible. All right. This one's a big one for me, this next one, because I feel like I see it everywhere. A lot of people, like my clients, get a lot conflicted. I've got female clients. So talk to me about this one. Waist trainers. Do they make a difference? A lot of bodybuilders wear them. Is there a difference between athletes and then the everyday person? Like, talk to me about waist. Like, are they a myth? Waist trainers are a bit of a gray area. I think, firstly, I don't think they do any harm. Mm. That's the first thing I'll say. Um, waist trainers, in my in my opinion, can be advantageous to a competitor who has got a thicker waist. Um, now, the reason there's different opinions or evidence or whatever but basically my way of thinking about it my logical way of thinking about it is when you wear a waist trainer it's going to make you you know you're going to you're going to be up you're going to sit up right you're going to engage your core properly and you're probably not going to be like when you're training so I, generally if i'm going to get someone wearing a waist trainer they're not going to be wearing it all day it'll just be while they're training and i don't do this with very many people but it basically, while they're training, they're not going to be trying to like use their core to stabilize because the waist trainer will will be helping them. So by not using their core, their obliques, they're not going to make their waist thicker. But it's not going to like give you this tiny, tiny waist. A lot of people will post like they sponsored or even they'll post like photos before and after their waist trainer. They've already got tiny waists. Like the thing with a waist, it's so genetic. There's all this. There's things you can do to enhance your waistline make it smaller, whatever. But at the end of the day, it's genetic. And a lot of the time it's bones that are making someone's waist big. It's not actually muscle, unless someone's just blown their midsection out from the way they train or the way they eat. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those things. If, if you're trying to keep your waist small, if you wear one while you train, it's not going to do you any harm. Um, but I wouldn't, like, don't go buying one thinking like, I'm going to get a snatched waist now because I'm wearing a waist trainer. Um yeah. And it can also teach you good habits as well. Like it can teach you to, you know, it can teach you to sit up straight and all that kind of stuff. The only thing I would say is don't wear it all day long because you'll stop using your core. And then when you don't wear it, you're probably going to hurt your, hurt your lower back because your core will be weak. Yeah. 100%. I love that. That's perfect. That's a great way to describe it. And someone who's a great testament to the actual fact they work from having a blockier waist is Kate Carroll when she explained that on the pod. So there's someone that it did work for and now her waist has come in a little bit. Um, if you see her from like four or five years ago, she looked a lot different. Um, speaking of that, I've got one to add in of a myth or truth or trash. Is it bikini girls and wellness girls, they don't train abs? Is that fact or fiction? What is it? Mine do. Mine do. <laughs> um, not all of them, though. The only time – so if I, everyone trains abs uh, that I coach. The only times I'll may like say someone's got like a really naughty six-pack genetically – I won't want them doing crunches and stuff like that. I might just make them do planks just for some stability, some core control, because you've got to be able to control your control your core on stage. And also you've got to you want a strong core because the way I like them to train, you know, the RDLs and the hip thrusts and all that kind of stuff, they need a strong core to be able to do them properly and not get hurt and to not use their lower back. So 
Yeah, a mind train core. Um, the, what they do for core may change person to person, but generally, um, everyone trains core. Most of the most of us body weight stuff, nothing heavy, but yeah, yeah kind of bit of muscle. Just keep it, keep it, <laughs> keep it all. Um, okay, this one's a good one. This one I have got lots of opinions about myself, <laughs> but I'm going to ask you about this because this is Jordan's. I want your your brain on this one. Calorie banking throughout the week. So just for people that don't know what that means is like where you are set to maybe 1500 calories, 1600 calories, whatever it might be. And you take a hundred or 50 calories from each day. And then you use that, those extra calories on like the Saturday, if you're going out partying or whatever, that's what calorie banking is. Is that, is that like truth or trash is the benefit of that? What do you think? I think it depends on the context here. So if we're talking about, firstly, you could just look at that as a carb cycle. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, which is very beneficial to, mm -hmm. to most people. Um, but if we're talking like for the sake of that, what you just said, I personally, it's not something I would. Well, if you're an off-season competitor, I would just have a cheat meal on the weekend and I wouldn't worry about banking calories for it as long as you're not going over the top. If you're in prep, then I, I wouldn't, nothing like that would cross my mind because it just, it's all that's going to do is take, like it's not, it's not an optimal way to do things. So mm -hmm. does it work? Probably because you're going to be in a bigger deficit during the week. But if you're trying to like enhance your physique and your progress, you're better off just having your plan. And then if you need a refeed, have your refeed. But yeah, I, yeah, I think I think calorie banking during the day might have a place, mm. but over mm. the week, yeah, there there is an argument for it. It's just I wouldn't recommend it personally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm the same as you. I'm exactly the same. Calorie banking throughout the day makes sense, but the week doesn't. But only because your body doesn't reset weekly, it resets daily. So I'm like, hey, your body doesn't know what the fuck you're doing. Like, what are you like? And it it's just, and it's, and it's just what are you taking away from those days? Like, That's if you're it. taking yeah. away calories from, you know, all those days, like you're going to, yeah. just for the sake of having a big meal, yeah. it's just not, it's just not what someone does if they're trying to enhance their progress. So, yeah. With yeah. You. yeah. Perfect. Love it. And it's also just not good for people with binge eating disorder and shit like that. Like, and that's my background. So I'm like, that would just, that would be like, oh, a loophole, you know? I'd be like, fuck, yeah, I'm going to exactly. peak. So it just depends on the person, right? <laughs> um. Oh, okay. This one. Bikini girls are bitchy. Is uh, it? <laughs> I'm a bikini I mean, they girl. Can, <laughs> they can be, but anyone can be bitchy. Guys, like male bodybuilders can be bitchy. Um. Oh, I mean, I've known, I've known some bitchy bikini girls, but I've also known some really cool bikini girls. So, you can say that about any class. Yeah. Um. I, I've heard it. I've heard the, you know, the, I've heard the people say it. It, it is a thing that people say, but I don't, it's, it's, you can say it about people that don't even go to the gym. So we can't really stereotype one class to be bitchy or whatever. Um. So I, I disagree. I disagree too. We're just competitive, but we, I think it's getting better over each year. Like I've been watching this since 2017, IFBB, and I, the, the girls back then were a little more bitchy than they are today, I reckon. So I feel like it's just, improving <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I yeah i guess but like i said any it, all classes are like 100 it's not just it's not just bikini yeah um and i think also people need to understand what bitchy is because i've heard people complaining about oh blah 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 was real rude to me at the show she didn't even say hi i'm like well maybe she was really focused yeah. on yeah. what she had just worked for the uh, work for 20 weeks towards Maybe she didn't want to have a conversation you know maybe she was nervous like there's always a reason so sure. yeah i mean they can be but and, well, they also can't. It's just a, yeah, it's not, it's a silly statement. It's a silly statement. And don't let it put you off, girls, because it's a great sport. No. Um, all right. This is, we're getting, in, we're going into a different topic. My, one of my favorite topics, because it's so yeah. controversial, but PEDS, are they basically cheating in the sport of bodybuilding? Well, they're only cheating if you're in an, if you're in a tested show. So if you're doing a natural show and you take steroids, well, then you're, a, yeah, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. But if you're competing, in an untested show no it's why is it cheating how is it cheating it's not it's not it's not against the rules um yeah. in fact it's expected at the highest level like everyone ex assumes everyone's doing something so no it's not cheating it's not unless cheating. it's cheating <laughs> it's actually cheating unless you're going to get drug tested then it's yeah cheating. yeah or you're in a natty show you shouldn't be doing it yeah. but actually can i ask you on that topic can that can that be done like because people surely can cycle off how long would that take? Like, how long would they have to be clean? Oh, heaps, heaps of the heaps of them do it. It, it depends Probably. on the drugs. That, it depends on the drugs. So different drugs will seem just for different amounts of time. And yeah. I've heard of so many things. Oh, I do, I've done this. I've done that. Oh, you know, you can do this. You can do that. It's just, uh, but I've also heard of people trying that and then failing the drug test and like mistiming their, mistiming what they're doing. So they deserve it. I just think like, 
one, like you've got to be a special type of person to feel the need to do that and take away someone's genuine work. But at the same time, like, like, why? Like, why? Just, you know, oh. just go do it. If you want to take stuff, go compete with people who take stuff. Like, it, what, how would that feel? You'd feel, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, it depends on what they're using and also what they test for. Not all shows will test for, like, all the drugs. So yeah. they'll, people find loopholes. They do. And there's there's plenty of, I mean, there's, I know people who could do the NZF, be natural nationals, and they've used stuff in the past. I know, like, I know them. I know who they are. I don't know what they've done. Um, they haven't done, they don't do it anymore. Are you really natural? Well, no, who's a cat? Are you really natural? No. Um, but it's it's a it's a bit of a yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. It's it's more it's more about people. I, I I get I get people that do that because they want to still compete and they want to use stuff, which is cool, you know. But I think still using stuff and then s still competing but wanting to compete with naturals is just weird. Yeah, it's just weird. That's strange. Yeah. You've got weird mindset people, <laughs> but that makes sense. Cool. I just wanted to ask about that as well. We're on that topic, but um, still on the same topic. Women get a deeper voice instantly when they start taking pairs. Is that is that fact or fiction? That's well, I mean, it can happen, but it's fiction because it doesn't just happen straight away. Or again, it depends what drugs you're taking. There's different different drugs do different things. Some drugs won't affect your voice at all. Um, like something like a growth hormone or insulin is not going to affect someone's voice, um, but something like if someone's taking testosterone or high doses of um, anabolics for long periods of time, their voice is going to get affected and other things will get affected too. So um, it's it's not just something that just happens straight away, but over time, sure. Yeah. And the side effects are real, but <laughs> not instantly. There we go. But I just, you hear a lot of people say that it just happens like within like a week or two weeks. And you're like, what? No, no, no. It doesn't, doesn't work that quick. Yeah. Come on. Not in my, not, not to my knowledge anyway. Yeah, I mean, how much are you taking first off if there's something? Um, exactly. You can't do well on the IFBB if you're natural. I think this depends, again, context, um, depends what we define as well. So if we're, def if we're talking like well as in turning pro or well, let's say we're well as turning pro and then being competitive on a pro stage, mm -hmm. very unlikely. Mm -hmm. Very unlikely you're going to be. It depends on your class. I mean, if you're superhuman genetics, yeah, okay, like maybe, but like one percent of that um in terms of turning pro i mean there's plenty of pros who have turned natural here um and they've gone on to do well but again it depends on what we define as well and also like we've got to remember here there's people who will take all the drugs and never turn pro yeah so uh, genetics plays a huge part i mean like we can look at someone like shay and she's like easily in my opinion the, the top natural in the country she's probably the only natural in the country who can i mean i may be forgetting a few people but to my knowledge she's probably the only genuine natural in the country um who can stand on a pro stage and and look good mm -hmm. um there's a few others there's a few others but we're talking like less than a handful yeah um so yeah it's if, if you're extremely blessed you can do really well um, but again it depends on what we define as well um yeah, I mean, sure, there's been plenty of people who have turned pro naturally in New Zealand, um, but then making that next step is going to be difficult. Um, just because it's like it's like racing a car and someone's in a Ferrari and the other person's in a 2020 Toyota Corolla. Like, it's it's that's literally what it's like. They're, they're drugs designed to take your body further than it's meant to meet what it's meant to do. Yeah. Um, so if someone's taking lots of stuff, it's just natural that. They're going to have a, a huge advantage. Um, so yeah, someone's. If, I mean, look, if someone's got the major genetics, and they work really hard, they're consistent all the time. They may have a chance, but I'm not going to sit here and say it's not possible. But it's unlikely for the majority of us, yeah. including myself. Good answer. Love it. Perfect. Um, there are good and bad foods. Is that truth or truth? This is this is true, and like people say, there's not. But like, you can't tell me McDonald's is good food. Like, come on, man. Like. There's bad food. It just accept it. It's a, this is this that bullshit like um this new thing where like, oh like you gotta have a good relationship with food. There's no such thing as good or bad. It's about portions. No, it, there is bad food. McDonald's yeah. is shit. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me if there's no such thing, thing as good as bad food. So you're telling me an apple is the same as having like milk chocolate if we do calorie mm -hmm. for calorie. No fucking way. There's good and there's bad food. Does that mean we can't eat bad food? Well, no, you can eat bad food from time to time as long as you don't go crazy and as not as you know, it's scheduled into your plan or even if you don't follow a plan, as long as it's in moderation, it's fine. It's not gonna hurt you, it's not gonna do it's not gonna damage you. Mm -hmm. But 
let's not be stupid. There is bad food and there is good food. And there is a line that separates them. And I don't care what anyone says. Yeah. And I think the only the only time people don't say things like that is to like either justify why they should have it or to try and like create this like I'm totally in control of what I do, which is cool. And look, if that works for you, that's fine. But let's not kid ourselves because you yeah. cannot sit here and tell me a Big Mac is good food. You can't. It's not. Like if there's no good and bad, what is there? Is it all just food? Yeah. Is it like and it's, just... and it's and the thing is, it's okay that there's bad food and good food. Like it's it's okay. Just mm-hmm. accept it. Like acknowledge one thing's bad, one thing's good. So well, that's good, that's bad. So I'm gonna eat that most of the time, and I'm gonna have this. If I want this, I'll have it every now and then. But I'm not gonna have it all the time because it's shit. Yeah, <laughs> I love yeah. it. That's fucking yeah. perfect. Like, how do you do the eighty twenty rule if you don't have good and bad? Like, what do you mean? What's eighty twenty? Like, you know, yeah. it's like. It's weird. I think everyone just likes to be wrapped up in cotton wool at the moment, and it's just like, let's just keep good and bad food in there. I ate a lot of calories worth of shit food on Saturday, (laughs) and it was all shit. None of it was good for me. And I accept that, and I knew that going into it. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, nothing is good, because I, you know, I, nah. Yeah, it's five grams of protein. It's still good food. Like, it's not. Let's just be real. Um, I love that. Is So would you say, like, the bad food is more like processed foods and, like, and the good food is, like, whole foods, maybe? Is that kind of like... Um, like, kind of like yeah, sort of- I would say, like, to me, bad food is, like, fast food, chocolate, mm-hmm. lollies, chip, potato chips, stuff like that. Package. Good food is your... Good food is, you know, your clean carbs, rice, potatoes, fruits, vegetables... Pro, good pro, uh, clean proteins like basically what you said yeah yeah i love it just Definitely. simple 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 it's none of it none of this needs to be fun. yeah keep it simple man it's so easy if you just like bring it down um okay this is a good one this is, word is still around and i don't know why but is toning a myth <laughs> well <laughs> 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 like toning is just being lean and having muscle yeah so Ugh, it's like you can say like oh well that's toning so it's not a myth but it's a myth because like you don't go oh i'm gonna go to the gym to tone well what do you mean you just mean you're gonna lose some body fat and have a bit of muscle because that's when i when right when i envision like toned i just think of like a not a skinny arm but like a, a very lean arm with a little bit of muscle mass yeah. and like a little bit of tricep so it's not there's you're not going to go to the gym and tone if you if you if you're if you're thinking of like i'm gonna go to the gym and tone um it, yeah, it's what I just said. You're just going to lose some body fat, be lean, and have a bit of muscle, and have a toned body. And have yeah. a toned body. So toning yeah. is a body recon, isn't it? It's like, it's, it's, it is a thing, but it's not a thing. Like, it's a, you know, it's a weird thing. And yeah, have, exactly. It's a thing, but it's not. This sort of thing, yeah. And you have to have muscle to be toned. So all these women are like, I'm just going to get skinny and be toned. I'm like, you can't just get skinny and be, you have to have muscle to be toned. Like, yeah. Anyway, but that's, <laughs> that's it broken down, everyone. I feel like that word's just still everywhere. Mm. Um, oh this is a good one for you because I think I don't know I have a feeling I know the answer from what you're going to say but we'll say but you have to train until failure to build muscle well my opinion on this topic is no you don't because you can build muscle you don't need to train failure to build muscle but I think you're going to build more muscle if you do train failure so I'm pro I'm pro failure Um, obviously there's going to be times where I'm not like there's going to be situations where it's not beneficial or it's not the best thing to do Um. But for the most part, I like people to train to failure. I think it's the best way to build muscle. But like I said, it doesn't mean it's the only way. Like what new people need to understand is there are so many ways to do this. One size doesn't always fit all, or not even that, but there, it's not like this is the best, this is the way to do it. This is the only way it's going to work. There is multiple ways to build muscle. Um, just in my opinion, the most efficient way is to train to failure train really hard say you know not every set as well i'm not like don't go to gym do 20 sets of quads and and take every set of failure that's crazy but i will generally recommend one to two sets per movement to failure unless it's like a sometimes i'll I'll add in like a volumization movement like a glute kickback for girls Mm -hmm. and they're not going to take that to failure they're just going to do three four sets of 15 to 20 reps or however many reps i prescribe so that's different but for the compounds like the hip thrust and the squats and that, whatever they whatever they're doing then yeah i i, I like failure all, all close to mm, yeah. Yeah. yeah and what is failure jordan because people say they've gone to failure and and you're like hey, yeah. <laughs> it didn't look uh, like it. <laughs> so if you're if you're training with a training partner mm. failure to me is like that last rep needs a little bit of help yeah if you're training by yourself you stop just beyond that for safety reasons unless you've got like a stopper that you can 
like if you're on a Smith machine or you can wrap it quickly or a machine or whatever. But basically, as many reps as you can do without, you know, with, uh, with as many reps you can do until you literally cannot do another rep. If someone has a gun to your head and they say, do another rep, you can't do it. Yeah. Anything beyond that, like four reps, drop set, is pass failure. Yeah. And again, there might be a time for that too, which 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 I which I which I like, but. You just got to be careful, in my opinion, how often you do that within a session, because that will fry you if you start drop setting everything or you start doing too many force reps. But yeah, um, most people don't go to failure. Though. That's the thing, but that's why I said it's not always needed because a lot of people think they're trying to fail, like you just said. Yeah. But I watched, I sent me their videos, and I'm like, you had four more reps. <laughs> you had four more reps. Or some, but then sometimes I'll get a video and I'll be like, okay, that's the set, and then like, oh, they're going for another rep. Yeah. And like. Oh, another one. <laughs> so, yeah, everyone's failure is going to be different, but um, understanding what failure is is important, and it truly means, like, literally you've given everything to that set and you cannot do one more rep, and you've just... Yeah. Everyone just, in my opinion, when they do a movement, their working set, they need to make sure they squeeze every single bit of that movement out from a control perspective, engagement perspective, weight perspective, mm -hmm. in relation to your uh, reps, and, like I said, leaving no reps in the tank. I think if you do that across the board, you're going to have some pretty good sessions and you're going to build some solid muscle. Nice. I love that. Set yourself up, guys, this, this week when you do your sessions, like so you can safely hit that failed rep. And everyone train harder this week. Do it. Um, and one thing I'll touch on, sorry, just no, go for before it. I move on. Don't, the set shouldn't change. So the form shouldn't change towards the end of the set. So if you've got 10 reps and you're tr trying to go to failure and it gets real hard at eight, don't start doing like, don't, don't change your depth. Don't like, start bouncing out of the hole at the bottom if you're doing like a hack squat don't don't um don't change the, the rip should the only thing that should change from rip one to rip 10 is the speed of the rip so as you're f failing you're going to start coming up slower because you're running out of power but the actual technique the the, the eccentric and whatever shouldn't shouldn't be any different it should just yeah. be consistent throughout and then when you train next week it should be the same but you should improve and so on and so forth a lot of people when they start going heavy or as I start to fail, the set will start to get a bit sloppy, um, which is completely natural. Mm. But it's something you want to keep an eye on and try. And that's why recording your sets can be beneficial if you have an honest training partner getting them to check you. If you know, uh, me and my training partner check each other all the time because you don't realize you're doing it. You'll be like, no, 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 get your depth or, you know, control that negative or, mm -hmm. you know, squeeze that, squeeze the contraction harder or there's always something. So it doesn't yeah. matter what level you're at, you can generally um, always improve how you're lifting. That's a good point. That's real good. You can fail on like strength, but also fail on technique too. So there's two ways to fail. So if you've already failed your technique, you've already failed. So stop. <laughs> like that's enough. <laughs> Cause you see a lot of people ego lifting, but it's part of it, isn't it? It's just learning and filming your sets is really, really good. Um, underrated, I feel, but um, yeah, good one. I like that. That's good. And the next one's similar, like to bodybuilding, but Steam Master is the best cardio. <laughs> Um, Stair Master can be the best cardio. It can also be the worst cardio, depending mm -hmm. on the person, depending on the situation. Um, yep. I'll program Stair Master every day for some people, and I'll tell other people, do not go near the Stair Master, depending on their physique, depending on their goal. Because Stair Master is very demanding. Um, and if someone, so say someone, for say a male bodybuilder or a wellness girl, someone who needs really big quads, um, Stair Master can be the worst thing for them because, you know, it causes a lot of demand in the legs, so it can shrink your legs quite a bit if someone doesn't genetically have big legs. But if someone's got really muscled muscled legs and they can, they doesn't, they don't really lose size, they, they can be great. So, yeah, it just depends on the situation. Um, it's like, you know, everything's a tool. We have a big toolbox, and it's just about knowing what to use and when to use it and who to use it for. Um, and, you know, some, like other people might, Use it sometimes. Like you might Monday, Wednesday, Friday might be stair master, and then Tuesday, Thursday might be the bike and all the treadmill. Or you know, there's so many options. Uh, but at the same time, a lot of it's nuance as well. I think people get a little bit too carried away and like, what's the bit like? What should I do for my cardio? Just do your cardio. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get lean. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, if we're trying to be specific and trying to really like optimize every single variable, then yeah, it's something do want to worry about but like i said it's gonna for some people it's great and for other people it's it's, it's it's not yeah and for all the people that aren't bodybuilders out there why is the steam master favored for like you know you see all fucking competitors on the steam master right up to a cup why do you reckon it's favored like just for people that might not know i think it's just a case of well one it burns a lot of calories 
Um, it's hard as shit. So like if you go 20 minutes on this, I'll give you an example. So I was doing last year when I was prepping, I was doing the treadmill. After every session, I was doing like, I don't know what, I can't remember the point of prep. Well, it was probably like till six weeks out. I was doing like 30 minutes on a treadmill, like low incline, nothing crazy. And then we switched it to the Stairmaster. And within like four days of Stairmaster, like my body felt exhausted. Like it felt exhausted. Like I, I felt, I didn't feel like I was prepping. And then all of a sudden, bang, I was really lean at the time. Yeah. Um, so it does create a huge demand, yeah. um, which is going to be good if you're trying to burn calories. Um, I think people also, I think people expect too much from it. I think a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to do Stairmaster, it's going to give me crazy times or crazy glutes, um, which, look, it can help that area, but it's not like some magic mm -mm. Um, thing. And I also think it's just become a trend. I honestly think it's become a trend. I think it's one of those things that used to be back in the day, like, a lot of the top, like the open male bodybuilders used the Stairmaster and we didn't really have, there wasn't many around. So you'd find a gym that has, oh, Stairmaster. I'm like Clyde Green on Stairmaster. <laughs> and then like they become more popular and it's just become like a, everyone does it because you're meant to do it. Yeah. You know? One of those. Versus why am I doing this? Um, yeah. yeah. But it, it, look, it's a good form of cardio. I'm not against it at all. Yeah. Like I said, it's just for some people, it's not the way. Yeah, for sure. There you go um cardio after after weights always is it a myth or is it truth um well that's that's a myth uh, i don't think it has to be after weights i think i i do think there's better times to do cardio uh, i think the most important again nuance i think the most important thing is that you just do your damn cardio um mm -hmm. i i like i prefer cardio done first thing faster personally not because it's some magical time you're going to burn all this body fat you're not but I do think there's benefits and not even just for prep. I'm talking even the off season. And my reasons for that is one, it's good for your mental clarity. So it just gets it done. I've had so many, like there's been so many times where people have missed, you know, people miss cardio. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. If you do it first thing, it's done. You're not putting it off all day. Things don't come up. Um, it does help with your appetite. It does help with digestion. Helps with helps how your body processes foods. Once you start doing it regularly, you're going to notice. I get a lot of guys who get to a point when they're growing they're like, oh, my appetite, I'm finding it really hard to eat. I say, okay, move all your cardio first thing in the morning. They yeah. do that, all of a sudden they can eat the meals again. Like it's the, it, it stimulates something. So yeah, I, I do like I do like fasted, but I'm not like, I've got clients who train at like 4 a.m. So I'm not going to tell them to do cardio before they do weights. That's just stupid. I'm going to tell them, okay, well, we'll just do your weights in the morning, do your cardio at night. It's fine. You're still going to get lean. Um, I have my preferences, but it's not, it has to be, you know, yeah. I do, I do like, a lot of people give uh, faster cardio a bad rap. And I think it's because it's sometimes portrayed like it's a magical, like a magical time to do it. Um, and it's not, but yeah, I do. I do like it for the reasons you said. Yeah. And post-workout can work too. Yeah. Um, the reason, the reason it's post, people say post-workout is they like, like it's the same as faster. They like the, 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 the reason anyway, it's because it's when your glycogen stores are depleted. So they say it's going to happen to body fat more. Will it? I think just do your cardio, but <laughs> it's good like i i program post world cardio because they're at the gym anyway they get mm. it done they go home and you know um be done with it so and it yeah it's one it's another one of those things bodybuilding things where it doesn't always align with like studies and stuff but yeah it's yeah. just something people do and it seems to seems to work yeah, and if you've got cardio to do and weights to do, you just got to get it done. Like sometimes it's just a matter of fucking doing it, and not when it is, and all this technical shit. And for me, I, I do my weights first because I have energy, more energy. That's all it is for me. Is I've, I've eaten and I want to use that to like lift weights and cardio. I can just fucking truck through, you know. But I guess it's just I'd always do weights. I'd always do weights first. Yeah, right? yeah. Unless yeah. you're just breaking it up. Like, yeah, and this is. I would never, I would never sell someone go to the gym, do cardio, and then do weights. Absolutely, <laughs> do weights. because yeah. it's pointless. Because you're wasting, like you just yeah. said, you're wasting your energy. You want to put all your effort into weights, and then use what's left. You might not even have any energy left, but yeah. do your cardio after the weights. After. Yeah, always. It's a split. Yeah, and if you've got that big gap in the day, you know, like yeah. in the morning, and then you can go back and yeah. So there's kind of multiple ways to do it, right? There ain't no fucking cookie cutter. It's just one of those. Um, all right, here's one that's like more lifestyle, I suppose, but like everyone should aim for 10,000 steps a day. I mean, it can be a start. <laughs> you want to like make a step count for yourself, but I don't think it's, no, you're not, you're, like, I, it's funny because I've got clients who like, I, I've had clients, like prep clients and I've 
and I've been like, okay, we're going to do 12,000 steps every day. This is like halfway through prep because I, I don't always program a step count. It'll, mm. There'll just be times where I do. Some people like program it all the time. Other people, I just know that I know their bodies. I don't need to. I know that their, their lifestyle, but I'll be like, hey, 12,000. They're like, oh, but I'm doing 19,000. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> they're like, yeah, like that's just their life. They're just busy people. They, they move around a lot. They do 20,000 steps a day. So everyone's going to be different. Um, but look, if you're watching this and you, you, but unsure and you want to you want to try counting steps and create that um create that consistency try ten thousand see how you go see mm. what it, you see where you're at already as well like some people like for me if i was if i didn't go to the gym and, and train and do cut like if I, well, even if i do, do go to the gym if i didn't monitor my steps i would legit probably do like three thousand four thousand yes, four thousand at most because i work at home um so i don't do any so i have to make conscious effort to do more so for me, doing 10,000 seems like a lot because I'm like going out, having to go walk around the streets. I'm not just work, walking, working or going for my car to my job. Like it's different for everyone. Yeah. Um, so I would, I would generally, I generally would set someone up for probably 8,000 mm. and go from there. But it's just like anything we do. Yeah. Just try it, do it. What does your body do? How does it react? Okay, go from there, move to 10. Also, how much cardio do you do? Because obviously your cardio is going to come from step count. So if someone goes for runs, they're going to do a lot of steps. Mm. True. So. True. Yeah, but no, there's no. I don't think I to answer your question properly. I think it can be a start, but I don't think it's some magic. Again, it's it's not a magical number. No, everyone exactly. should be on ten thousand steps. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone... I do see that. I do see that a lot. A lot of people. A lot. I always see ten thousand steps. So I, I I understand the question. Yeah, and I understand the confusion around it. But yeah, it can work. Sure, but I don't think it's like yeah, it's not magic. Everyone likes that one way for it to work for everyone, don't they? Everyone likes the key, you know? It's like it's just only not... it was that simple. Everyone just followed the same shit. Yeah, we wouldn't have a job, we'd be out of work. Like <laughs> what the fuck are all these pointer coaches of like, you know. Yeah, I know. Um, so it's actually a little harder than that. Um all right, this next one has been like a trend for like ages. I'm not into it personally. I don't know how you feel about it. We'll find out. But ice bars, are they overrated? And maybe like the hot cold therapy is all the same thing, isn't it? But what are you for reckon? bodybuilders there, yes. Yeah. For bodybuilders, yeah. yes. Um, if you actually go look at I mean, you know, I'm gonna make people be proactive here. Go look at studies on what ice baths do to your muscles. Um now if you're if you're a, an actual athlete. Bodybuilders are not really like athletes. We lift weights and stuff. But if you're like an athlete that like like a fighter or someone who does really high, high, high um like forms of cardio and whatnot, then we could have a conversation. Yeah. But in terms of bodybuilding, I think Chris Bumstead started doing it. Now everyone does it. Yeah. I know. <laughs> um, I've actually seen I've actually seen, seen studies where it says it can be detrimental to muscle building. Yeah. Um and I haven't read too much into it, if I'm honest with you. So I'm not going to like run my mouth. But I've I have read studies that have said that. Um, but there are other benefits. Some people aren't like. It's one of those things. But I see people doing it for other reasons, other than. You know, other than, but for other for other reasons, like for um, health reasons and stuff. And yeah, maybe then it can be beneficial. Um, mental reasons and whatnot. Um, something to do with like blood circulation as well but in terms of like if we're just talking bodybuilding it's one of those things you don't need to do it it's not gonna it's not gonna make a difference to your physique it's not gonna make you any bigger any smaller it's not gonna make you no no if you like it though like if you're like oh it wakes me up and like whatever do it but like i mean no. i would it's not gonna make I, do, a I do need to i do need to look more into it for for reasons outside of bodybuilding reasons to yeah. be able to like actually talk about it properly and have a confident enough opinion i don't want to like just pretend i know things i don't but um yeah i just know that for bodybuilding reasons it's not, it's not gonna make a difference yeah and have you done it no i haven't <laughs> i've done shower i've done like cold showers but it was more just to see what it's like it wasn't like um and i i, I felt good after i'm not gonna lie mm -hmm. um but i haven't done like an actual ice bath i would try it just to like just just for yeah i like trying things yeah yeah but i wouldn't be doing it like thinking like oh yeah this is like the hag yeah this i'd is be doing it i'd be doing it because it's a challenge it's yeah. fun it's you know yeah film it for youtube exactly it'll be like yes. that. go to fitness portal and get it done they'll let you in um 
Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. So yeah, ice baths. If it, if, if you like them, do them. If you, otherwise, it's not going to be like a fucking game changer. Um, okay, never skip breakfast. Um. Well, again, context. <laughs> Put it this way: I don't write plans to have people skip breakfast. I don't yeah. write a. I don't write a plan and say miss breakfast and eat at twelve o'clock in the day. Yeah. yeah. Only time I would possibly do that is like if I purposely wanted to give someone a digestive break. Mm. And this would be once in a blue moon. For example, you competed on Saturday. I want you to, even then, I'd be like, I'll cut your meals to three. But yeah. still, I don't care when you eat them. It's not something I tell people to do. Mm. Skip breakfast. I, so I would, I would, I would agree. I would, I would agree with that statement. But I would also say there may be times where it may be beneficial if you need like a break digestion wise for breaking down food. There may be a time where it's needed, but it's not something that should be a regular occurrence. Yeah. Yeah. So when you do like your programming, you're like meal one, meal two. It's not like here, have this for actual breakfast and lunch and dinner. Cause no, it'll like be like it'll be like four to six meals, but yeah. like eating yeah. You know, every cup, every two, two and a half to three hours. But like, if you, to 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 fit them in, you need to eat breakfast. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to be eating at three a.m. Yeah. So it just goes without saying. But yeah. I don't write times. The only times I write times on a diet is when I peak someone. Yeah, peak. Yeah, that's when yeah. I'll, that's when I write times. But other than that, I just say, here's your meals. Yeah. Um, yeah. Unless someone had like a crazy schedule, or they were like doing crazy things, and like I was like, this, why are you doing that? Then I would break the. Plan down and be like, hey, you want to now eat this at this time, this and this time. But ninety nine point nine percent of the time, I just write meal one, meal two, meal three, etc. They know how to feed themselves. Um, on that topic, though, fasting, I guess it's pretty similar. But do you are you in favor of that or not really? Like, has it ever worked? Have you ever fasted? What do you think about it? Um, <laughs> again, it's not something I program, but there may be times where it can be beneficial for specific reasons. Again, it's generally always for me in the. Uh, other people might say different things, but for me, the point of that would be to give someone a break digestively from, yeah. from eating. It wouldn't be for any other reason, unless it's obviously like religious or something. Mm. Like a big clients have to fast for that reason, but yeah. generally, um, if they are fasting, it's because we need to just give their body a break, give their stomach a break. It's not like I'm not doing like intermittent fasting with anyone. Put it that way. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, all right, fat burners will help you burn fat. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm supposed to make sense, but is it true? Um, well, it depends on the fat burner, yeah, but the true. ones you buy over the counter, the one, the, the, there's some that will. Yeah, no, you're right, you're right. Maybe um, let's talk about the difference. So, over the counter, obviously, over, over the counter is not gonna literally burn fat, but they may put your body in a state which aids the process yeah. so for example caffeine and mm. all the other shit that's in them um but don't expect miracles here <laughs> like they're not it's a, a lot of the time the fat burner like over the kind of fat burner is just an energy thing mm. you know yeah. when you're when you're you're in a deficit you may be feeling a little bit low on energy you take that and you feel better um mm. but yeah like yeah and obviously these other fat burners that bodybuilders yeah. use that are not over the counter and they 100 percent will burn fat at mm -hmm. a much faster rate than you would without them. Yeah, for That's sure. The That's the yeah, and you can't buy them all at the same place, guys. So don't, don't even try. I mean, you well, can't. Shouldn't be able to. <laughs> <laughs> If only it was that easy. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's so true. They are more like um, energy and appetite suppressants over the counter. So don't think they're going to do anything fucking crazy for you. Um, there's very minuscule data on any of that shit. So, but it's, I mean, take them if you want. I take OxyShoot every single day because I like the taste. I like the energy, all that stuff. So I love our citrulline. So just do whatever you want to do, but it's not going to be magic. Um, all right, carbs will make you gain weight. Well, well, they will. Anything will make you gain weight. <laughs> Like, of course, they, of course they can make you gain weight because if you eat too many of them, you're going to be in a surplus and you're going to gain weight. If you use them to your advantage, they can actually make you lose weight, you know, if you get metabolism firing and you know how to manipulate them. So carbs can make you do anything. They can make you lose weight. They can make you gain weight. It's just about knowing how to incorporate them, how much to have, what kinds to have, when to have them. Um, and then obviously it's not just about the carbs. It's about what you're having them with. It's just about the whole plan in general, the whole diet as a whole, but any macronutrient can make you gain weight if you have too much of it. 
more than your body needs. And at times you want that. Like we, some people want to gain weight, other people don't. So um, I think like carbs gets a bad rap. Carbs gets blamed for everything. Carbs get blamed for body fat and they shouldn't be um, because like I just said, if you use them to your advantage, they're going to make you lose fat um, because the carbs are the macronutrient that stimulate the metabolism. And the metabolism mm-hmm. is the is your best friend when it comes to bodybuilding keeping a, getting a healthy metabolism and maintaining a healthy metabolism it's not the easiest thing in the world to do but once you do it it makes the process so much smoother um, and the only way to do that is to be super consistent over time mm-hmm. yeah which is hard but worth it all right so carbs aren't the enemy but if you have too much of them like anything else you will gain weight naturally yeah, it's like anything like any too much food just, just change <laughs> carbs to food <laughs> Yeah. Now, who makes you gain weight, literally. Um, I'm going to add a little extra one in here because I just thought about it, but a lot of people say this as they move into bodybuilding or if they want to start, but bodybuilders don't party or drink alcohol. Is that truth or do you, what do you think? Well, when I first started bodybuilding, when I was like 20, I never like went out or anything. So I was like, <laughs> I can't, like I need, you know, I didn't know any better. Now that I know better, um, I think moderation is fine. But if you're trying to be the best, let's be honest, if you're trying to be the best bodybuilder you could possibly be, drinking alcohol and partying is not going to help you. It is going to hold you back. In moderation, you probably it's probably not going to matter. But I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, it's fine, you can do all that stuff. You can do all that stuff, but there's levels to bodybuilding. Like People that are winning Olympias aren't doing that shit. They're not. Mm-hmm. It depends on your goals. If you're just trying to you know, do well at a local show, you want to go out and have some alcohol it's it's it's, you're probably going to be okay as long as it's not all the time and you're not taking the piss but it's not it's not it's not something that's going to help you but at the same time if you're too tunnel vision for a lot of people it's going to burn you out so -hmm. it's about finding that balance um some people work best just fully locked in zoned in like they literally love to live that way it's what they live for um and that's all good other people aren't like that and i also think it depends on the class you're competing in Mm. certain class is going to have more leniency a bikini competitor is going to have more leniency than an open male bodybuilder because you know why because a male bodybuilders and people go like that's bullshit well a bikini girl's not trying to add like 40 kgs of muscle to their frame yeah. and when you're trying to add that extreme amount of muscle it takes a different level of focus it takes a lot more time and you can also lose it a lot easier so it's just the way it is it depends on the, it, and, like, and like i said before genetics are important some people can get away with murder and other yeah. people can't. Um, I know some. I know some people who look um, like so good, and like the what what they do to look that way. It's honestly not fair. Damn it. They shouldn't look how they look. It's just it's just the way it is, though. Like it's just that's bodybuilding, and you've got to accept that. So, um, yeah, you can have a life. You don't have to not have a life, but there's just gonna be. You just got to accept that. Like it, it, it's not. It's not gonna be like getting on the piss. is not gonna benefit your physique. It's not gonna benefit you in any way other than you're going to have fun so yeah. in my like in my honest opinion i think it's a bit of moderation having fun every now and then is important because we only live once yeah um so you're going to have fun every now and then but it's picking your times and your moments as well like if you're going to go out oh, if you're prepping for a show and you're going to go drink wine that tells me straight away you're not taking it seriously but yeah. if you're if you're deep off season and it's like your birthday is your friend's birthday and you're just like you know what i have a good time tonight it's probably not going to hurt you. It's probably not going to hurt you, but yeah, but it's also not going to, it's not going to help you in a competitive sense, but mentally it will. So True. it's just it's up to you to weigh up. Yeah, absolutely. But I think it's also about priorities. Hey, it's like a lot of athletes are like hundred percent all in and that's why you don't see a lot of them partying because they are all in. And if they go out partying, they know that maybe the other people that they're competing against aren't and then you feel out worked. And so it's a little bit like that, but. And, and the level as well, like the higher <laughs> yeah. level you are, the more committed people are going to be. Yeah. And it's no secret that the people who are the most committed. They are doing that shit. They're the, they're the, and they're the best. Yeah. And yeah. that's why, because they're dedicated all the time, not just sometimes. And I think, um, I also think people think you can have too much balance to yeah. be good, especially yeah. in New Zealand. Um, uh, yeah, like <laughs> it's almost like we're scared to like demand excellence. Yeah, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of people are anyway. Yeah. Um, and I'm not because, like, at the end of the day, I just want people to be the best they can be, and. Like if you, if you really think like it's okay to go out all the time and all, all this shit and it's fine and you know you're prepping and you can have all this flexibility and you're, and you're you know, it's just 
It's no. not. It's not how it's done no. at the top level. No. So it depends what you're. It depends what you're trying to trying to what you're trying to be and who you're trying to be and how fast you're trying to do it. Yeah, that's true. But if you want to be the best in New Zealand, you can get there if you want to work hard because other people aren't. So <laughs> trust me, you can get there if you fucking put your foot in front of the other. Yeah. Anyone can. Yeah, 100%. We're in a small country. It's easy to get to the top, so keep working. All right, last one for the segment. Without, We've already kind of talked about it, but just going to touch on it again. But without great genetics, you won't win an IFBB. And, like, maybe I'm just on the – not the pro league, maybe just the amateur league. No, I disagree. Um, yeah. Look, some people, some people – some people won't win. Mm. But I also think that's also partly their application. Um, it's not all genetics. I Look, like genetics are a thing. So there is going to be people who put in a quarter of the work of other people and they're still going to win because they're just born to do this. There's going to be people who give everything they can and they just can't crack it. Look, they'll pro- like if you, if you work hard enough for long enough, you're going to win your class at national level. It's just going to happen. It's yeah. inevitable. But winning like the, the overall pro cards a different story. So, um, yeah, if like I said, genetics play a part. There's going to be people who won't win, but th- th- they probably weren't doing it for very long, and they also probably weren't training very hard, weren't being consistent all the time. If someone's genuinely giving their giving their all in the gym, they're sticking to their plan all the time, and they've been doing it for five years, they're going to win. They're going to win. It's going to happen. Like it's it's just one of the it's just, it's, it's inevitable. You would have to be so unlucky genetically. Like, your structure would have to be, like, yeah, like, very unlikely. So, you, I, yeah, I wait. Did you say? I don't know if I agree or disagree, but I'm saying <laughs> without if growing you go hard enough, you long win. enough in New Zealand, you're going to win your class at Nationals. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I love it. That's perfect. That's good. To, that's good to know. And then after that, beyond, we're not even going to talk about that because it's just <laughs> another level. Um, but yeah, thanks for playing. That was a good game. I loved it. It was really fun to like <laughs> get inside again. <laughs> they were just all by the way if anyone gets butt hurt anything i said it was just all my opinion don't get yeah, upset with different opinions yeah like no one should be taking it that to heart i mean come on guys it's not that deep it's just a little game but um oh, i'm just going to hit you some, with some more questions before i let you go because obviously we want to know what you're up to this year and all that kind of yeah. stuff um i also just wanted to throw another question in there do you have any clients doing fmg or wbff no 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 and are you opposed- I, I do i do have uh, some of the people who did and they could be enough to yeah. but nice. I don't have any more to them. I don't yeah cool yeah, we've got a few of those and I know there's going to be someone on our stage this year including like Nicole Kuka and like a couple oh. of other people it's going to be really fun to watch them transfer over um, and you don't really watch those shows are you going to watch the first FMG it's next weekend but are, are you into that or not nah, just IFBB I'll be honest I don't watch yeah no fair enough um, there's always I, the- I would have yeah no nah, it's just I like raw bodybuilding. Um, I, I don't even watch a lot of bodybuilding shows, so I'm not going to, you know. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> and it's a bit different, like, it's a bit of a different show, right? Like, watching the girls and the guys is a completely different story. So um, there's a few Kiwis, though, so anyone else listening, if you're into that, go and watch the Sydney show next week because there's a few Kiwis competing. But um, have you been watching the IFBB show, uh, season one for Aussie? Have you been watching any of those shows? I, like, I, have, I haven't watched it, but I've just seen some things that have popped up. Yeah, um, no. Nice. Yeah. On Instagram, like I saw uh, one of the male bodybuilding novice classes. Like, oh, they look good. Holy I was shit. Like, whoa, <laughs> novice. And then you posted something like a video. Yeah. On yeah. on your Empire page, I think. Uh, yeah, like the standard level was good. If you haven't seen the classic physique guy from last weekend, everyone, you need to go and see him because he did true novice, cleaned all the way up right through there and he is incredible his posing his stage etiquette his every single little thing about him is amazing he's going to go all the way i guarantee you'll be on olympia stage like i guarantee it i think you might know who i'm talking about but hey guys go and have a look um it's been fun to watch their live streams i'm so happy they do free ones for us but all right i have to ask you you know i have to ask are we going to see you on the stage this year jordan no <laughs> no you know, i'm not going to be there. no one's going to leave me nah uh <laughs> I, this is waste of time answering because yeah. people have asked me i've gotten the same answer anyway or whatever but no i won't genuinely this year is uh for me i've got a lot of opportunity coaching wise um and i want to be 100 percent into that i don't want it i don't you can't i mean you can but it's so much harder to be prepping in the middle of prep pushing yourself to that level while also having like i mean i had like 17 athletes through nationals last year um with me competing as well 
and it was actually fine because I was lucky. Like everyone was super cool, super chilled. Um, they made my job as easy as it could be. But it's 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 only going to get you know. It's it's I want to be all, all in there. Um, not just in here, but I've got like lots of overseas shows as well and very high level athletes. So kind of like you've got to be. I, I won't sleep those nights. Like I'll be. Here's your meal. Update me in two hours. Let's to peak them. You know. Here's your meal. Update me in two hours. Here's your meal. Update me in two hours. Here's your meal. And like, if I'm prepping myself, I can't do that. I can't do that and go train the next day. Like, it's just not, nah. So, um, this year, it's, it's for me, it's just 100 percent coach. Sure, oh, nice. But we will see you on the stage again, no way. Oh, I'm not saying no to next year. Okay, but this year is um cool. I don't have any plans. Like, I'm not planning. Oh, I'm going to be on no. stage next year, but it's, I'm not saying no. Yeah. But I'm just saying no to this year. Easy, yeah. love it. And that's all good. We'll see you around anyway, which was my next question, was what shows do you think you might attend this year and, like, go watch and support your athletes? Where do you think we might see you hanging out? Um, so, obviously, I'll be at the Auckland show. Um, after that, I'll probably be – I think about 90% of my athletes going going this year. Oh, wow. Um, I, my choice. Uh, I just like where it is in the calendar. Nice. The amount of time before the nationals for me is, like, perfect. So I've, I've recommended that for majority – other a few more are doing Christchurch who are like wanting to do the natural the natural nationals so they've got to qualify in a natural show um so yeah I'll, I'll most likely be in Wellington I probably won't be in Christchurch the week before Wellington I just, it's just too much yeah um, and then nationals as well maybe Waco um and then I've got before all that we've got a show I may be going overseas to uh amateur show in Chile in August end of August where I've got a big team competing there Cool. Actually, my second. It's actually my second biggest team, like for one show after Wellington. The second biggest team in terms of numbers is there, which is which was, which has been a goal. And then I've got we've got a show, a pro show in America in Shay's one. Oh yeah, and cool. Then, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then um, yeah. another another one and uh, another girl, which I may be going to in Argentina in December. So it's gonna be a lot of traveling. Another reason why I don't want to compete. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in terms of New Zealand, likely will be Auckland, Wellington, Nationals, Waikato, um, and yeah, I don't know. I haven't I haven't planned too much ahead because you never know what's going to come up. But I mean, I, I like to go to the, as many as I can because you know I, I like to see everyone in person, and you know it's it's, it's cool. It's, uh, I enjoy going to the shows. So yeah, it just depends on what's you know what 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 what's going on in life basically. Yeah. It's good to turn up, show bay, see what's out there, see who's turning up. And you and you see a different show in person than on photos. Like yeah. you don't see a lot of people have these opinions based on photos and based on videos, but when you're there in the flesh, it's different. So it's different. So yeah. It's hard to make calls, eh? You're watching like I'm watching Aussie shows. I'm like, this one should win. It's like you don't even know unless you're there. So yeah. <laughs> turn up and just like buy a ticket, like support fucking IFBB, like make it what it is, you know. Um Last question for you. Any advice for athletes moving into their preps now? Some people are getting deep into it. Some people are diving into the the shreds, you know. It's like it's a bit of a mindfuck. But any advice for these guys? Um, well, if you don't have a coach yet, get a coach. Regardless <laughs> of what you think you know, get a coach. I would never do another prep without a coach. Mm. It's just such a, such a, like you cannot, it's very hard to think rationally. Mm. Your own, you know, you always want more, 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 push harder. So get a coach. If you've got a coach, I guess just follow what they say. Um, don't be one of those people that like, oh, have a coach and he or she said to do this, but I think this will be better. So I'm actually going to do this. And they said do 20 minutes cardio, but I'm going to do 30 minutes. And they said no cheat meals, but I don't care. I, I know my body, so I'm going to have one on Saturdays. And I just won't tell them, like, don't do any of that shit. So many people do that shit. Um, just like you hide your coach for a reason. So just follow what they say. Take, Don't stress. Just literally do what they say. Don't be, don't, don't be in a rush to change things. Don't like just if they don't want to change the plan and it's working, keep following it. If they do want to change it, change it. Um, just follow your coach, trust your coach, and be prepared. So do all the little things as well. Like do your posing, do your, you know, like do do those make do those things that are gonna do those those extras, you know. Like a lot of people don't put enough time into their posing. I, I take my hat off to the bikini and the wellness girls. They 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 practice all the time. The guys don't. The guys yeah. don't. And when you're on stage with them and you turn to the back and you hear them breathing, oh, yeah. fucking gasping for air, you know they haven't been doing their doing their posing. Like when I when I competed last year, I was doing, you know, I'd do half an hour of constant rounds two, three times a week, no, no rest. 
and I would be dying. Like it was harder than cardio, but fuck, it made it easy. Like I wouldn't, I would, and that's I wasn't keep going. I'm, I'm, I can do this all day. I'm, I'm conditioned to it. Um, mm-hmm. And that's what I tell my, my clients to do as well, because it, it makes such a difference and it doesn't just, it doesn't just help with how you're posing, but it, it, it's, it helps with so much more like your breathing's better. You're not taking big breaths. Your stomach's not coming in and out. Um, you're holding your shots. You're, you're not forgetting things, making mistakes. You're not nervous. You're confident. Um, and that's one thing the bikini girls do really well um, mm-hmm. is you guys are always practicing all the time, which is really, really, really beneficial. Mm-hmm. And it shows, like it shows, makes such a difference. Yeah. So yeah, basically follow your plan. Get a coach if you don't have one. If you do, just listen to your coach and just trust them. Yeah. And um, if you are doubting, if you are doubting like what, doubting them already, it's probably a bad sign. So either have a conversation with them or try something else or just put yourself in a position where you don't doubt what you're doing. You're following what they're saying and you're doing all the extra things as well because you're probably going to have a posing coach. So, you know, do what they're doing, saying. You're going to have a normal coach, do what they're saying. If you have a training coach, which I don't agree with, I think one coach should do everything, but, you know, just follow, follow your plan. Yeah. That's the that's the that's the short answer. Follow your yeah. fucking plan. <laughs> <laughs> In a nutshell, pretty much as simple as that. And just and like you said, your posing gun, posing stamina can have you in first or second or third or fourth. Like you can show, like it changes everything. And just on that note real quick, I just wanted to share that everyone, um, Rhiannon and I have got three posing workshops for bikini and wellness coming up. So if anyone's keen to come along to them, you don't have to be part of our team. You can be anyone. We're not teaching you routines. We're not changing your routines. We're just doing stamina and practicing your, like how to swap and all that kind of stuff. So DM me if you're keen to come along to those because it's really important. Posing is so huge. And I'm glad you touched on that, Jordan. So um, are you taking on any clients? Sorry, let me just touch on what you just said. Yeah, yeah, well. go for it. Yeah, I got a little bit. Sometimes doing things like that, it's not even about. It, it might not be necessarily. Be, it might not even. It doesn't matter who it's with. Just in general, when you have things like this to your advantage, which are cheapest shit to go to, it's just going to force you to do the posing. So just for that reason alone, um, just do it because it's. It doesn't. You know, it might. You might not even. It might not even be about, it's not about, obviously it's not about fixing your pose or whatever, but it's just about you're going to be there and you're going to, it's going to force you to pose forever, how long. And otherwise you probably wouldn't be doing it. You'd probably be at home doing nothing. So put yourself in scenarios where you're forced to do what you know you need to do. And then it's done. You've done it, you know, and you can chill. So, yeah. yeah. I love it. And you're standing next to your competitors for the year, which means you're not supposed to size them up and get competitive. It's just nice to be in that environment. So it's not the first time you're in that environment when you go backstage and you have to do it. Like, it's just nice to have that already ticked off. It's good to take down the ego a little bit too, because you actually have to like be cool, you know. <laughs> this is what it is. Um, what um, do you, Are you taking on clients for this year still? Like, what are you doing? Yeah, in the moment? Um, yeah uh, but obviously running out of time if you want to work with me. Um because, you know, preps are starting. The one thing I'm saying this year is I'm not going to take on anyone that I don't think there's enough time to prep properly. So in the past, I've taken people like 12 weeks out and sometimes it's, it's enough time, but a lot of time it's not and you end up having to like crazy diet them down and it's just, it's not a good time and they don't really look how they could. And so that's my one rule this year is everyone I work with is going to be, I need to be confident we have enough time. So that's going to be different for everyone, but um, I'm still yeah. If you if you want to get in touch, get in touch. Uh, we can have, at least have a conversation about it mm-hmm. and go from there. Always looking to help as many as I can. Nice, thanks, Jordan. That's awesome. And if you're keen for like next year as well, you get in touch now. You do it now. You don't yeah. like <laughs> do it now. I've got a lot. I got a lot of clients competing this year who started this time last year. Exactly. Was on. They might. Some of them wanted to compete, and I said nah. Like, which is cool. It's always cool when this happens because a lot of the time you will tell someone you're not going to be ready. Like you need to push it out to next year. And they kind of just go to someone else who will take them. But I had quite a few who were like, Oh, thanks for being honest. Like, let's do that. And I'm like, Oh, oh cool. Let's do it. And they're going to reap the rewards now. For exactly. And you get to watch the season too. You get to watch it like in your off season and suss out what's happening and like what everyone looks like, you know, it's just kind of like fun to be a spectator and then you get to have your turn. Like it's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. So um, yeah, get in touch with Jordan guys on probably Instagram is the best way to get in touch with you. Yeah, Instagram, Instagram. Yeah, yeah, just DM them, get in touch and, and suss out your off season for next year or, or if you can hustle it up for this season. Um, any sponsors or anything I'd like you to shout, uh, you'd like to shout out before we finish up? Redcon and Extreme Nutrition. Yeah. Great nice. products. <laughs> that's it that's all he's going to say about it <laughs> do you have a code they speak, they speak for themselves <laughs> they do they're awesome um nice well thank you so much jordan it's been good to chat again and like pick your brains a bit and try a new segment and like it's just good to see you 
No worries. Thanks for having me on. It was a good time, a bit of fun. Yeah. Love Until it. Next time. Yeah, we'll do it again soon, I'm sure. But have a great season with your athletes. We'll all be watching um, and get in touch with Jordan, guys, if you are keen to start up and get in, get on Team Neverfold because they are fucking epic. And you're going to see it again this year about how awesome they are. Um, and don't forget to like this video, subscribe, all of that stuff to support the pod. Um, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks, guys. See you, Jordan. Bye. See ya.